Well, uh, thank you, and I, and I am so honored to kick off the Society's year-long public awareness campaign on the transformational impact of molecular diagnosis. Why, why are all of us here today? The word transformation um, is so important. What it means is to us in the room, the status quo isn't okay. And, and after listening to the earlier talks, I have to say, I'm also delighted to be part of a program which highlights sex and allows us to talk about that as well. So, it's just fantastic. There is a common bond, getting, you know, more seriously, really. There is a common bond, though, that brings us together here this evening. Um, there is a common bond that has led me, uh, Larry, who you heard earlier, Margaret, Marsha, Phillips, Phyllis, who's been so amazing. Um, yeah, and so many of you, every one of you, I believe, in this room, to be here and to devote um, your lives to health research. And that's the simple fact that when we see someone, when we see a loved one, or even when we see someone that we never even met before who is sick or suffering, we care and we want to help. And more important than that, we want to do something that really works, that really makes a difference. And, and I think the frustration that many of us have felt, certainly the frustration of someone training um, in medical care in the last century was that too often um, medical care is provided with a one-size-fits-all approach um, with limited benefits and often with high toxicities um, and unacceptable cost. And, and in many ways, in thinking about a career in personalized medicine, this is what the society and Phyllis and, uh, you know, has been talking about for more than two decades. Actually, it's something um, my, I'm fortunate actually to have my wife with me here tonight, and she uh, always reminds me um, that women are different than men. <laughs> Yay. But, but even more importantly, um, I'm reminded by Gail Wright that, that not all women are the same, that there are unique differences that we really need to understand and think about when we think about delivering quality medical care. And so that then is, the, is, is really the connection that we all have to um, molecular diagnostics, uh, something that, that maybe in the past didn't sound so sexy, but I think as, as a result of this evening now, we're gonna be thinking about it very differently. Um, it is revolutionizing healthcare. It is driving personalized medicine. It's helping us to uncover really those underlying mechanisms of disease that in the last century we didn't have the tools to see, that we did the best we could by looking at disease uh, under the microscope, but it wasn't telling us about those differences that might really matter. And these advances then are the advances of diagnostics that now will allow, and now do allow, and that's what we're gonna, again, see tonight in, in the video at the end, is how patients are now receiving the very best in healthcare, not only in the case of prevention, but also in diagnosis and treatment, and in the long-term management of medical conditions to make them manageable in the long term and not fatal. I mean, that's... This innovative field of diagnostics has made a tremendous impact on women's health already in a wide range of conditions and diseases, from cardiovascular disease, where we have seen, um, and we can do better, and that there's still an urgency 
in, in education and in making sure that the advances we've already obtained are known and that patients have access to them in cardiovascular disease and mental health and in ovarian cancer. But as you'll hear from me um, and from the video boy, there's so much better that we can do. Building on the breakthrough technology innovations such as the Human Genome Project led by Francis Collins and new diagnostic methods such as PCR, we founded Genomic Health in 2000 with a dream. It was a California dream. It was to develop new molecular tests, new diagnostic tests that would allow patients with cancer to select the right treatment, not based on a one-size-fits-all approach, but based on evidence, based on knowledge of how their disease is different um, and how it can be uniquely treated. And then pioneering then this new approach, we brought together, and this is, again, I think a theme of the society. It takes a team. It's a theme, certainly, of FDA. Uh, it takes a team. It's a theme. It's the only theme to win and to have success is to bring a team of scientists, clinicians from industry, academia, government, regulatory agencies, patient advocates, um, and ultimately, it allowed us to study, and this was so very cool, we were able, because women signed consents to have their tissue analyzed for clinical research, how brave and how great it was that they saw and had the foresight to see that, yes, they were suffering from breast cancer, but also they could help others by allowing their their tissue to be studied, we actually were able to study more than 5,000 women in 15 clinical trials in order to make available a revolutionary new test for breast cancer patients. Few people are aware of a, a fact about chemotherapy and breast cancer. Um, and we all know about chemotherapy and chemo, and, and certainly many of us have known someone who some, someone, someone we've loved, someone who we know that's had to get chemo. But at the end of the last century, based on the best evidence that we had, um, we knew, based on those studies, that only four out of 100 women actually benefited from chemotherapy at the time of an early diagnosis with breast cancer. And yet, despite that, because we couldn't or didn't know who were the ones who benefited the most and who didn't, we offered chemotherapy and all of its toxicities to 100 women in order to just benefit those four. The Oncotype DX breast cancer test, which, which we now provide, helps women with newly diagnosed breast cancer determine, based on studying women who've had chem chemotherapy or not in the past, which of them need chemotherapy or not. And it's actually, since it's been available, and it's now been available now for 10 years, it's allowed more than 400,000 women to get to the right treatment for them, not only here in the United States, but now from more than 770 different countries around the world. Um, and it's actually helped more than 100,000 women avoid unnecessary chemotherapy. But I want to be clear, it's not that, again, we're saying that chemotherapy is bad. I was speaking to a woman just a couple of weeks ago who, based on the test, was found to actually have a high score, um, to be at greater risk of having a recurrence, and therefore, and actually based on the test results, um, of, of knowing also that chemotherapy might give her benefit. And she said to me, you know, before, you know, I, I, I really wasn't sure what to do, and certainly I'm not happy now that, that I'm going to be going through chemotherapy, but now with personalized medicine, with molecular diagnostics, I know at least for me there's a clear benefit for me, and I'm going to grip my teeth and get through it. And, and, and I think that's great, too. It's not just about uh, avoiding unnecessary treatment. And, and in thinking about this and in thinking about 
um, again, its applicability and in thinking about women and women's concerns, um, I've also learned um, that, that, that women are concerned about their husbands just as, as we as husbands are concerned about our wives and about you know, our children. And so uh, most recently, just 10 months ago, we made available a test for prostate cancer. Uh, you've all probably seen in the, in the papers and in the media all the concern about PSA testing, uh, the fact that it certainly helped us identify many more men who, who, who can be diagnosed with prostate cancer, but it doesn't help us yet to identify um, which are the small number of men who have aggressive disease who need to be treated aggressively, uh, but also which are the men actually who can be managed closely by their physicians, who will carefully monitor their disease, who maybe can continue to monitor it and allow them to go forward without aggressive treatment, avoiding the toxicities that are associated with surgery such as incontinence and impotence. Um, and so now there actually is a test, uh, an Oncotype DX test that allows men, men, and actually what I've now learned also uh, it allows men, but also the women that love them because, in fact, um, when men go to their doctors and when they're thinking about their health care decisions, well, guess what? Who's likely to make the decision in the family? You know, it's, it's you know, often women that play a key role in making that decision about what's the right thing to do, how should I be thinking about this, how do I make plans for the future that make sense? We are so proud um, that it is really the advances in this field in the United States that is really bringing these innovations not only to us in the United States actually, but also we're leading the world in this. And we're bringing again these innovations to people all around the world. Everyone knows that drugs can be life-saving. Um, it's important, and I'm just delighted that the society is highlighting that diagnostic tests are life-saving, too. Mm -hmm. So what, what are we going to see from the society? I, I, I'm just totally amazed. You know, in a short period of time, as they talked um, to, uh, to uh, you know, leaders in the field as they thought about how can they make a difference. The society will be spearheading a multifaceted campaign. First, during Women's Health Week um, on May 13th, the society will host a congressional briefing that focuses on the importance of molecular diagnostics. We all need to be part of the solution. Congress needs to be part of the solution. Congress is going to be implored by the society to facilitate the development and adoption of these new technologies to ensure that there is access. What is, um, as an innovator, um, I've now learned it's not just about the technology. It's also about access, it's about awareness, it's about activation, it's about education. Um, and, you know, again, this is going to be, you know, one of the great things that the society is going to do. The Congress should establish, according to the society, appropriate reimbursement rates to make sure there is access for tests that really work. Second, and, 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 and this is really great too, the world is changing. There are new vehicles of communication, there are new venues where we talk about the future, where we bring and we get together in order to help each other create the future that we want to build, not, not to be a victim of the future. And so the society is also proud to be a partner and sponsor of Ted Med. You all have gone you know, and have apps, you've gone on the internet, um, TED is just fantastic, and now again with TED Med, 
the society is going to be playing a lead role in helping to drive the agenda to work and partner with them to create a healthier future, a future that actually is driven by our dreams and by our vision and by our energy. So that's just fantastic. And so the next TED Med, take a look on the internet, it's going to occur in September, and the Society will be hosting an invitation-only innovators and investors breakfast, as well as a panel discussion in Washington, D.C. on molecular diagnostics as part of the three-day TED Med meeting, and certainly all of us will hear more about it after that session. The panel will have an opportunity um, to talk about the history of diagnostics, but more importantly, the importance of investment in this field and the value that they can provide. And it's going to be a really provocative session. Third, uh, the society is working on innovations through a newly relaunched website, a YouTube channel, and also we'll be using online and email communications. And finally, to reach out more broadly to the public, the society, I'm proud tonight to be able to, uh, on behalf of Phyllis and, and, and the whole team, to um, be able to say that we'll be hearing about a national multimedia campaign that will include print, TV, radio, public service announcements that will highlight uh, what diagnostics means to every one of us. Uh, the Society has created a video. What we'll see tonight is a longer piece. It will be cut into small pieces that will be used to produce 30-second public service announcements appearing in markets across the country. It will emphasize the importance of molecular diagnostics in terms of prevention, diagnosis, and treatment. And more importantly, and I love this, um, and I think it's great, by the way, that none of us have had slides. We'll have a chance to watch the video and see how understandable everyday language and not medical jargon, not abbreviations, will allow us to communicate to the public why we should all care so much about diagnostics. Thank you very much.